Welcome to Houston Sports Talk with your host, Robert Land. Thanks for checking into the best Houston sports podcast. And joining me is our favorite Rockets expert, Frank, with Rockets Chop Shop. Check out his latest video breakdowns on the Rockets Chop Shop YouTube channel. And man, it's been way too long, Frank. Good to see you, brother. Hey, appreciate you for having me back on, bro. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to hit you with a major take that tends to stir up Rockets fans' emotions. But let's start with Udoka. And man, it's strange to see after an 0-3 start, or strange to say, I should say, after an 0-3 start, but I can't be more impressed. The adjustments, game to game, even half to half, how quickly he's revamped the entire defense, and even how he's turned Shingun into a competent defender. What are you seeing so far? Adjustments. And I think that's something that we had missed from the previous regime that we had with Steven Silas. Um, I know a lot of the fans are disillusioned and panicking right now about how the team is going. I, I, I don't take that approach. My challenges for coaches is that if your team makes a mistake in one game or in one half, what do you do to fix it? And I think for Adoka and his staff, from the Orlando game to San Antonio game to this game, you can tangibly and objectively see the, the improvements that they're making on a game-by-game -game basis. And another marker I look at is how he adjusts at the halftime from when, you know, his initial game plan is not going well, which for us, pretty much all our games, we start off either, I think Orlando, we might have been kind of even or, or winning at the half, but most of them we've been losing. He always goes into something different in the second half to come out and kind of try to get the team back on track. And for the most part, they do. Now we run out of maybe bench talent and other issues that come in shooting to not allow us to win these games. But like you said, Alperen Shangun's defense is night and day. I would say he's a slightly above competent. I, I think that he is actually our second or third best defender on the team, which is not saying much <laughs> for the Rockets because <laughs> we have it goes from like uh, some elite defenders who falls off a clip. But out of the young core, he's been the best defensive player. And I know a lot of people are going to be shocked to hear that. Then you look at, you know, just how he's integrating some of these players into the system. It looks messy at first, but I think over time that Warriors game really is going to show you that the Rockets, what they're building is something that's scalable over time. It's not just KPJ had a hot shooting night or Jalen went for 40 and we beat some good team or we had 60% shooting as a, as a, from three as a team. We're not playing well, but we're in games. And at this point, once the talent catches up with the effort, then I think you guys will start seeing the returns from Coach Doka. Yeah, just a quick thing on the shooting and everybody's remarked on that. I think it's very obvious the shooting is an issue, but it's hard to – Fix the shooting, Frank, because you've got these young guys that you want to give a chance. And the problem is none of them can shoot. None of the young Rockets can shoot. They've all been bad. We keep waiting for them to turn it around. They don't. You're not trading Van Vliet or Dylan Brooks. You're not taking them out of the rotation either. So to get shooting, where do you fit it in, even if you get it? And, and that's the issue. And the problem is, even if you get one shooter out there, you've got Shangoon, Jabari, Jalen, uh, Cam, Amen, none of those guys are really good shooters at this point. Yeah, that's um, two big flaws on a roster is the bench and the shooting. I would say we have about seven and a half players, NBA level players on our team at this moment. The shooting, uh, you know, last the Warriors game, we shot 27.5% from three to their 41 or 42%. You're not going to lose, uh, win a lot of games shooting like that. And in addition to that, not only are we not shooting well from three, we're not even generating threes. You would think that in an offense that you're not shooting well, you try to play the math in the NBA by spamming. We've seen Mike D'Antoni do that with some questionable shooting teams by generating a lot more threes so you can kind of make the math work for you. But if you're not generating threes, you're not making threes. It's an uphill battle offensively. Um, right now, the best actions they have working for them is Shangun uh, post touches where he generates double teams and at least gives our guys a chance to shoot open shots. But that could only get you so far if you're not shooting. Some disappointing things that I've seen early on from Jalen and Fred is that when they drive into the paint, uh, not a lot of kickouts and the paint is real clogged. So I would say the, you know, that bench and the shooting, that's a roster thing and that's on Rafael Stone. And if he was serious about trying to compete this year with the $60 million, million cap space, I don't think 
that he put together a fit roster to try to do that. And uh, and I think that that's kind of coming back to bite us right now as uh, we see our starters. Robert, you're not going to believe this. Our starters are a plus 14 in the three games. So that means that we're actually winning the minutes where our starting five are on the court for all three games. It's the bench. The bench is is just such a big negative right now that it's it's almost impossible to try to balance it out with the play of our starting five. Yeah, and they missed Tari, no question about it. Yep. I knew they would, and it, I knew it was a big deal for the bench. I knew it was a big deal for rebounding. Rebounding is a little shoddy at times, and, and rebounding improved last year thanks to Tari, which everybody should know by now. But all right, this weekend I posted this on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, just as I expected. A bunch of Rockets fans took it personally, started firing insults that I even suggested it. And if you're listening to our audio version, I wrote, <laughs> wondering how long Rockets fans are going to disillusion themselves about Jalen Green. And my point was, of course, he's not a future superstar top 10 player. For me, he's not. I don't see it. And I'll even take it further. Further, I'd be shocked if he's a future all-star. And no, it's not personal against Jalen. I think everybody thinks you, you say something that's not great, then it's, it's a personal shot. I hate the guy. I hate his family. No, no, and no, I did not um, want to draft Evan Mobley. No, this isn't because I'm Team Shangoon or Team Jabari. Nobody besides his family and the Rockets organization want Jalen to be great more than me. I'm sure Frank feels the same way because if he's doing well, the Rockets are doing well and we're having fun doing what we do and, and, and it's helping our, what we do as well. And But it's time, Frank, to sit the kids around the dinner table, have an honest conversation. Do you agree? Yep. I mean, I think that with Jalen, I'm going to say that I've tempered my expectations of what his outlook is going to be as a player. I think the variation of all the way up to star to a good role player, it's still there. He hasn't shown anything to say that we can just pencil him in for a future all-star. And I think this season right now, the way he's playing right now, it's not even clear yet um, if he's going to take that year three leap that everybody and he, he himself expected to. My marker for Jalen is going to be two things. For him to be a star, either he's going to have to get a lot better at distributing the ball and sharing with his teammates. And not I'm not even talking about just passing to assist. I'm talking about using his skill set as a, a guy that's explosive and fast, get downhill into the paint and not try to contest or go up against three or four people. Punish the defense for crowding the paint and converging on you when you drive because that manipulates them. And that's when you get to that level. Okay, you're, you're impacting the game and you can generate offense for your team. He's not doing that yet. And number two is be better on defense. If you're not going to do that, if you're going to be a, a traditional shooting guard, then the, most of the shooting guards in NBA history that have gone on to stardom, like Kobe, MJ, if you want to put Dwayne Wade, as a, they're all defensive players, two-way guys that are it's going to, they're going to guard your best player or best scorer at, in the backcourt and also drop 30 on you. And the defense is an issue. So, you know, one of the the weakest archetypes, and I, I'm I'm not saying Jay, this is what Jalen's going to be, is just a guard that can score. We just saw Zach Levine drop 50 points, 51 points, and lose to the Oklahoma City Thunder or whoever they were playing. You can't just be just getting a guy that gets buckets. So I'm going to say for him, I'm still awaiting him. I'm going to give him this entire season before I can clearly make a decision about what his outlook is. Because one, he's not going to have the time to keep learning. Four years in the NBA, by, I mean, he has to get paid. So that conversation is out the window. They want results now. Or he's going to get paid like a role player if he plays like that. I'm giving him this year to see. I've given him the grace of learning a new system under a new coach with new teammates trying to adjust. If over this season, nothing really changes, then I think the conversations are going to be have to be had about not only is he a, a star or not a star, is what is his role for Houston? Because if Jalen Green doesn't hit as a player, then, I mean, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble because um, – him and Jabari and Amen Thompson, at least to me, two of them have to become something. You know, Jabari's looking shaky right now. He has a little bit more time, but we've invested a lot, a lot, a lot of time and effort in losing to get these kids. And the Steven Silas thing is kind of more 
apparent how bad it was to keep him on as the coach now that is basically Jabari and Jalen look like rookies. We've put all that time, wasted a lot of time, and if they don't work out, we're going to be in a world of trouble. So I'm hoping, just like you, that he does become the player we want him to be. But right now, yeah, he hasn't really shown, like, either way, is he somebody? We don't know. We'll have to find out. Yeah, I'm going to make my case now, and it's really multi-pronged, and some of it's going to double back on what you said, but everybody on on your Rockets media apps are going to tell you about but what about the points? Look at all the points. He can score points. Look, points, that, so what? You know, you've got to do everything. And his only elite skill is scoring. But is it elite if you're not efficient? His shooting right. hasn't improved at all in three years. He's streaky, so you get excited for a sec, but the averages haven't changed. You aren't a star if your only thing is a streaky score. You're a six man at best at least on a legit contender. Is his defense improving under Udoka? I'd say marginally, but when do we stop overlooking the terrible instincts and his poor effort on defense? And look, if Jalen doesn't have the ball, you barely notice he's on the court unless he's making a mistake on a defensive assignment. That's not a sign of a guy that's going to be a star someday. And it's not just that, it's the intangibles. There's nothing that shouts he's a leader, either through his demeanor and his interaction with teammates, or when he speaks, he comes off more beta than alpha. And plus, Frank, his basketball IQ, not good. And I, I'm, I'm being kind about that. And Jalen, you know, he, he hasn't added any elements to his game from year to year. I mean, that's what stars do, Frank. Once again, I'm I think that there are there is raw talent there, and you're not wrong in a lot of your assessment. And, you know, when he came out of school, uh, out of school, out of um, the the G League Ignite, I, I, I wanted him to be a Kobe Bryant 2.0. That was because you look at the work ethic, all the stuff you heard about him as a player is this like tireless worker. That change for me is I kind of learned his demeanor. He doesn't have that cliche but mama mentality. He's not a guy like I think a man Thompson is almost a psycho like that which is somebody that you just know is he sleeps, eats, breathes basketball, and that's all his focus is. So I lowered it down to the Devin Booker upside. And if he can't reach that, then it, it just begs the question, what what his is upside? I'm, I'm not going to be too harsh on him because I actually disagree with you. I think he's been showing a lot of good effort. Uh, he just has it misplaced and he's still, his uh, instincts on defense, especially off ball, are not great. But otherwise, him and Jabari, even when they mess up, they're going 100 miles an hour. He's, you can tell they're still exercising some of the demons from Steven Silas. Bad rotations, laziness, overhelping, random things that they did for two years. Now he's being asked to do more. That's why I, I give all of these dudes about, about a two-month grace period before, before I start making a long-term assessments of him. I'm going to give him time. And I think all these questions are going to be answered sooner rather than later for him. Once again, remember, Robert, this is a contract year for Jalen. The extension talks for him begin as soon as this season is over. What he's putting on tape is going to determine what he gets paid. So I think the market is going to decide whether he's a star or not. And uh, he just has to play better to, in, a, in order to really prove to Stone and to, to Tillman Fertitta they're going to give him a big payday. You could say, I, I guess he's putting in more effort. That's fair enough. But for me, it's, you know, there's just too many times where he's on the court and I, I'm looking around and he's not trying to dig a ball out. Just all this little stuff that you see with uh, somebody like Fred Van Vliet. And, and you talked about Booker. Booker was an elite shooter, you know, when he when he entered the league, practically. I mean, he was great at shooting. And Jalen, the shot just hasn't gotten better. If, if, if the thing that you're relying on is your scoring, most of all, and that hasn't improved, you know, that's a big deal. And the other thing, Frank, is what's his shot? What's the signature Jalen Green shot right now? Does he know where on the court he's supposed to take the shot that's his shot? He doesn't. And 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 that's just, it, it's like he it, he's somebody that totally doesn't come in with a game plan. I, I just don't feel like he, he knows what to do or wh what he's supposed to do or anything. There's just not a game plan there. Yeah, that's one of the things about him. He doesn't have like that skill set. Like Devin Booker is a very polished player coming out of, out of uh 
out of school, out of Kentucky. I always said he, he has a very limited bag. Like he doesn't he doesn't have a post-up game. The footwork isn't great. He's probably over relied on athleticism to really get him to where he was. What you bank on is his work ethic. Um, and I think the two years, once again, I'm not going to discount the fact that the Rockets invested absolutely nothing in the development of their talent. The only reason to me Alperin Shangun is so successful is because he was coached under Turkey and a real basketball system, and it was a pro before he came to Houston. And to me, they probably almost ruined him. And luckily for him, those summers in playing for Turkey probably helped his career out too in between the Rocket seasons. Now he's here. You're seeing him have a, th a third-year leap under a competent coach. And I think, once again, Jalen, he got, you know, Austin Rivers said it, a, a couple of ex-players have talked about just how bad the culture and the things that they were getting, uh, and John Wall, were allowed to get away with him and Kevin Porter Jr., not even off the court, on the court. Lazy defense, you know, bad, just bad mannerisms, lazy in transition, no second effort. Over two years, it's it's a lot to unpack for him. I think he's learning. When he can put it together and really, really kind of feel natural and playing without thinking, I think you get to see more of his skill set uh, come out. I agree with you. He doesn't have spots. He doesn't know whether he's a mid-range shooter. Does he like to get downhill? If he does get downhill, is he a guy that avoids contact or wants contact? He still doesn't know. He gets up in the air and just kind of gets lost. Where's um, the floater, by the way? He the, goes the inside floater. all the time. He hasn't yeah. developed that at all. He looks over to a guy like Ja, who he loves, who he admires. They're friends. And hasn't added what, that. Yeah. Ja's that got that already and he's had it for a couple of years guys the more more polished player more jalen is just really raw and i think that we assumed he would get better over time like he worked with kevin durant i haven't seen anything he's added from any of the summer workouts or guys he's worked in i don't know i think um it's just going to take time with him and to really make a clear assessment but i know he's going to get all the opportunities here in houston to do so especially this year if once again robert if if in january He's still playing like this. I think that then we should be worried. I believe that what you're going to find is that his numbers are not going to change very much from last year. What I do expect is that efficiency to go up over the season as the season goes up. To me, that would be a great sign that he's actually developing and progressing because I'm assuming he's playing competent defense. He's trying. He's reading the game a little bit better. One thing I want to see out of him is the driving kick. To me, that's really the biggest flaw in his game, as I said earlier, is that for all that speed and explosiveness, teams are practically daring him to pass the ball because they will put four or five in the paint. And he's so ton of vision on his drives right now that he just goes straight up and prays for the foul. And I just feel like if he can unlock that part of his game, then whether he's shooting well or not, like we've seen James Harden have terrible shooting games, you're still impacting the game. Because like you said, when he's not scoring, what is he doing? If you're a superpower scoring, you can't score, then, you know what I mean? Then what are we talking about here? So... But Cam Whitmore is on his neck, you know. You know, if the Rockets need to pivot, they got another two guard that that's right on that bench that's already built for the NBA, just as explosive, probably, you know, could do some of the same thing. So um, I think there's a lot of pressure on him this year to perform. And, yeah, we'll find out that answer uh, pretty soon. Yeah, there's things that Cam's better at Jalen already, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But – Really, he's Jamal Crawford right now, isn't he, Frank? Is is that who Jalen Green no, is? Not even. Not even. Jamal Crawford is probably one of the most skilled. Jamal Crawford knew, like, even early on, no, knew how to get to his spots to score. Mm -hmm. And I, if Jalen was Jamal Crawford, I'd be happy. <laughs> right <now. laughs> so that's not even a, a, a diss. That would be a, a compliment for him. Uh, but, no, he, he, he just needs to find whatever his thing is. And I think he's still searching. All right, let's get to Cam because you, it's funny you brought that up. By the way, does this mean Jabari gets off the hook? Today he does, but trust me, that conversation with me and Frank is coming. <laughs> but uh, one last thing, Frank, I, I'm not a huge Reggie Bullock fan. His one big skill, shooting, but in 10 seasons, he shot 28% in November. I mean, that's not a small sample size. That's November over 10 seasons. So I'm hoping that as he's done so far, Udoka – will be able to pivot off of something that's not working. And it's no secret that he's just terrible. Bullock is the first two months of the season shooting. So, Frank, despite Cam Whitmore's shot selection and tunnel vision, and I'll grant you all that right now, 
and he might screw that stuff up. But don't you think he's more of a plus than Bullock today because of Cam's defense, which is more switchable? And he's just, you know, he's he's causing steals. He's doing stuff defensively. And Cam's rebounding, which he's a pretty good rebounder for us, for, you know, a guard. Yes, I think anybody, literally, you could be a more of a plus than Reggie Bullock because he's not really doing anything. He doesn't shoot well. He's not a great defender. I think for Cam, uh, you know, Coach Udoka, as most 99.99% of coaches, they trust vets. So he's still going to give Reggie Bullock that that trust, and they, I'm sure they know that he's, he's going to struggle. Maybe they see that they will need him later on. Personally, yes, I would play Cam. I would play Cam. I actually like Cam's defense in the preseason. That's one of the things that I was shocked at how well he he was. Um, he has natural instincts on defense, which I didn't know were was in his game. And he, his shot selection is horrible um, at this moment. But to me, you can coach that up even within the games. If he starts getting crazy, pull him. But yeah. you didn't even add transition. Cam Whitmore should be our KJ Martin in transition and and offer a different dimension and verticality to the team that. Um, we we don't have with a lot of our players. You think about Dylan Brooks, Fred Van Vliet, Jalen can get up. Amen Thompson's a demon on rebounding. I, you know, he's that's very impressed at how he's been rebounding. But Cam gives you another body that can go up and get a rebound, that could box out, like you said, can switch, can run in transition. And at worst, he's going to shoot better than I think last I checked, Reggie Bullock was like 11% from three. So I, I think it's coming. He's, he's probably going to play against the Hornets. Um, he's going to have to play. If or else that bench, once again, we beat Golden State with our starting five. Where we lost was the bench minutes. Their bench in totality was a plus 56. You can't win games when the other team's bench is a plus 56 on you. But this is, I mean, Rafael Stone, that conversation needs to be had too. Like this roster, he looked at it and said, this is how I want to start out phase two. And to me, pivoting from Brooke Lopez to... Jacques Landale doesn't make any sense to me. The way they just threw away a bunch of you players that think about how good Garuba would be on this team. Think about even if they had prioritized Kenya Martin Jr., a smart player that offers you just high IQ ball and can do multiple things on the court. All these players that you could have uh, handled better and, and had more depth on your team just pissed away um, in panic trades and moves. And I think this is where we, we're at because of bad decisions by the general manager. Now, he has still the trade deadline to try to salvage it. But I think if this roster doesn't work and we struggle throughout this year, I'm looking at him. I think he's the next one that we have to really ask. Is he the guy that's going to build a contender here in Houston? Which I think the answer is no. But I, he's up next. Like, he has to answer for uh, wasting away $60 million. You said something that I can't agree with more. If Cam Whitmore starts taking bad shots, Udoka gets the hook out, and you pull him from the game. And that's how you teach a guy. And that's something that the Rockets didn't have the guys to do last year. Not that Bullock is, you know, necessarily the best option. But frankly, give me Nate. Put Nate out there. I'd rather have Nate out there yeah. than Bullock. Yep. And the other thing about Cam is what you do is you get uh, – is Mike D'Antoni doing anything right now, or is he retired? He's he sitting, sitting, sitting watching the games from the house. Yeah. I, I I bring Mike D'Antoni in or just get him on a Zoom call and I go, hey, Mike, here's what I need you to do. I want you to show Cam which shots he's allowed to shoot <laughs> and which shots he's not. <laughs> you're not allowed to take turnaround 18 footers. You know, you get to take, you know, wide open threes. Um, if it's a shot clock thing, you can, you know, force up a three or something like that. But you know, I either need you to go into the basket, you know, getting in the paint somehow, at least getting a, you know, a, a shorter shot. But, you know, we're, we're not taking long 18 footers and, you know, you move the ball around and get the best shot and, and, and all that stuff. But, yeah, I just feel like I, I just don't understand why Reggie Bullock was playing as much as he was, you know, especially it was obvious that he wasn't helping you a whole lot. And we already know he can't shoot the ball early in the year. So that's a given. Um, before I let you take off, Frank, um, what's the latest Rockets Chop Shop video that people need to go check out? Have you done any really good deep, deep analysis after the first couple uh, of games? Just general post-game stuff. I just published the uh, Rockets Warriors game, did a little breakdown of the fourth quarter, kind of what made us lose. His name is Steph Curry, but 
Um, you know, <laughs> this, not, a, not a lot of analysis there. <laughs> Steph Curry is the answer. But um, one thing I'll say about the game, uh, really proud of the way the, the guys played. I know they lost, but the way they lost does matter because in previous years, like Draymond said this after the game, they would have blown us out by 20 or 30 points. But we actually forced the Warriors to have to get into their what makes them special, that extra level. They haven't had to do that against us since James Harden was here. We were able to stop their initial actions. They like to run a lot of um, split action with Draymond in the post and having Steph Curry get screened on the perimeter to get shots. Shangun did a great job fronting on those and trapping uh, Steph. And they had to get into their secondary stuff, which is the scramble plays and um, a little more off-ball movement. And to me, that tells me that we're going in the right direction. When Steph has to go into his I'm a Hall of Famer mode to beat you, then, yeah, you got a good team. And we just have to get to the level. And they showed us the extra level teams have. We don't have that yet. We don't have a guy that could get up there. Once we have one of those guys, then I think we'll be fine. But as of right now, I think that game showed you we could stick with most teams is just the teams that have those special players. Um, either one of our guys got to step up real big or or it's going to be a long night. But proud of the way they fought. And uh, yeah, to check out the video. It kind of details some of that uh, that in the fourth quarter when he came in and scored 14 points in seven minutes. One quick thing, because you talked a lot about the bench. Do you like Shangun coming off the court towards the end of the first quarter and Jabari being the first guy off the court? Or would you rather Shangun maybe set him up to play more with the bench because, you know, he could help maybe some of those guys? What, what's your opinion on that? I think um, the way Udoka is doing it right now, he's staggering Shangun, Fred, and Jalen, that one of them is representing on the court at all time for offensive purposes. Right now, I think last I checked, uh, Shangun is like a plus 20 or 30 something. Uh, for us. And when he's not on the court, it's like a minus 40. I don't know. It's something crazy. Um, he is our offense right now. Um, and I think that the, Coach Adoka, some of the lineups are a bit questionable, um, but I, I do I do like him staying out there to kind of gap it. And then they take him off and give him a, a nice break. Then he comes back to close out the quarter. Um, so I, I do like it like that. They also did it at the end of the third quarter where they took him out and the start of the fourth where they took him out and he comes in so he can finish out the rest of the game. Um, but in some games, this is something I learned from la the, over the few years, the start of the fourth quarter really can make you lose a game. And I think those are important minutes that coach may need to look at to see if he can come in to start the fourth then take him out, give him a breather to then come out. And I know a lot of teams do that with their superstars where they'll leave him to start the fourth quarter, then give him like a two minute gap in between then come out. I don't know if his condition is good enough for that yet though, but um, I think that's probably where they need to go. Man, it's been a pleasure, Frank, to get back in contact. And uh, we got to do this again soon. Thanks a lot, man. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you, bro. You're listening to Houston Sports Talk. Hey, don't forget to support us by subscribing and commenting on YouTube. You can always listen to us on Spotify, Apple, or your favorite podcast app. Tell your friends about us and share our show links on social media. Spread the word, everybody. Thanks for listening.